You're sort of in this bizarre paradoxical situation where our planet is growing in people and in appetite, but it's shrinking in resources. We can't support the global population with the food that we provide today. Um, so addressing it through a different means is a huge game changer. Agriculture is really around innovation. It's about making improvements, it's developing, it's uh, doing it differently than we have in the past. I think agriculture is in a really interesting space and it's on the cusp of a lot of new innovations. In 2013, I was pursuing a joint degree in medicine and an MBA at McGill University. And um, I received an email in my inbox that completely changed my life. And it wasn't so much an email as it was a dare. Um, and it was a dare to build a business that can address global food security. I was able to recruit a, a team of students from my university and we started doing some research and that's when we came across this extraordinary insight that insects are a widely consumed protein source around the world. We wanted a cosmopolitan species, so an insect that exists virtually anywhere in the world, there are people. And the reason for that is thinking long term as we want to scale our business around the world and set up these facilities anywhere. We don't want to be able to introduce insects to a country that are foreign to that country because that could have real significant ecological issues. We wanted an insect that actually has what's called good organoleptic properties. So that's the fancy way of saying it potentially tastes good. And we ultimately landed on the insight that crickets really had the highest potential for scalability in terms of indoor climate controlled precision agriculture. So when you think about us trying to build a facility that will be the smartest indoor protein production, fully automated facility in the world, you begin to realize that each one of those adjectives has a deep level of expertise behind it that we as a single startup don't. We have partners who do. So Next Generation Manufacturing Canada, NGEN, is Canada's advanced manufacturing supercluster. We're in business to help build world-leading advanced manufacturing capabilities across Canada. Advanced manufacturing is all about coming up with really innovative, unique solutions to some of the world's biggest challenges. This is the biggest project that we've invested in, uh, over $72 million in, ter in terms of the total value of the project. Uh, we're providing almost $16 million to, um, uh, to support the project. I would say this is probably one of our most significant projects in the last decade, just in what we're trying to do here. So the building can be divided up into basically three parts area where the, the crickets are actually grown. So that makes up over half the plant. The second part of it is the way they're harvested, right? They're harvested from these totes and then are essentially frozen. And then there's the packaging part. The sensors that we're gonna be building that are going to be um, on a specific number of bins allows them to then monitor the health of what's going on inside the bin with the cricket production. And with that, have an overall health picture of the whole manufacturing plan at any given time by evaluating the data that's coming from each of those modules. And the sensors are going to be able to communicate with the TELUS network. We've got a 5G ready network um, and the IoT sensor technology that we've worked with with Swift Labs on. And I think bringing that all together, you've got 5G capability that's low latency, high throughput, um, obviously allows for what we would see as the emergence of computational agriculture. Our, our hardware application is basically like building the nervous system of a body so that all of the data goes to the Darwin AI application, which works as the brain. Generally speaking, the most powerful form of artificial intelligence is something called deep learning. And deep learning is based on neural networks which are virtual constructions that emulate the cognitive capabilities of your brain. And so when we look at maximizing yield and we look at just the, the myriad of different uh, variables that go into harvesting crickets and ensuring you know, that you're maximizing that whole process, deep learning can really assist with that in a, in a significant way. By virtue of producing you know, crickets at this scale, you also produce byproducts from crickets. The, 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 the excrement that the crickets generate, which is called frass. Frass has extraordinary potential as a fertilizer, as a soil amendment. 
with the Spire uh, ANL Laboratories, we'll be providing analytical services in the uh, for the production of the FRAS uh, to look at commercial opportunities for fertilizer-based products in organic markets uh, and possibly uh, broader uh, commercial markets as well. I think the Aspire project is a really good example of where advanced manufacturing is going in the future. Everything is interrelated. Uh, we can talk about the circular economy, really end-to-end -end management of materials and processes here. So we minimize waste, we minimize energy use. It really is a world-leading project in, in this regard and a, a great demonstration of Canadian capabilities and I think a project that can be replicated and can be commercialized around the world. We can play on a global stage with all of these major technology players. We're, we're finding a better way to feed people protein nutritiously with, without damaging the environment. That's been the mission for ANL Canada Laboratories for decades, is supporting uh, sustainable agricultural practices for the uh, support of uh, a healthier planet and healthier people. You know, I have a son who's 22 months old now. It, it really becomes about what's the world I'm leaving behind for, you know, his generation. So to be involved with something where they're just so actively thinking about that level of sustainability is just incredible. If you can use technology to try and eliminate food insecurity, why, why would you not do that? We really fundamentally at TELUS are a purpose-driven organization. So we believe that business can and should have a social purpose. We believe in the application of our world-leading technology and I would say human compassion to create better outcomes. And I think in the instance of what we're trying to do with, uh, with Aspire and this NGEN uh, initiative is really applying better data and better technology for better food outcomes. If you're working with Aspire and all of the partners in this project, you've got to think big and you've got to think about new solutions and the value it's going to contribute, not only to Canadians, but, uh, but to the world. Um, that's why NGEN wants to be involved, and, and not only why we invested in this project, but uh, why we're really enthusiastic as well to be a partner. You know, we refuse to live in a world where food and nutrition insecurity abound. And we have the audacity and the skills and the passion and the ingenuity and the rebelliousness and the commitment to excellence to do something about it, right? And I think that is the fundamental ethos of our company. It's that simple.